I've already shown and proven to you in my other videos like the Nazi Templars, Auschwitz made in Switzerland and Hitler financed in Switzerland that the Nazis were financed by Switzerland and that all the top responsibles for World War II and the concentration camps were either Swiss or ethnic Swiss. So here's another one. He was one of the most important Nazis and an ethnic Swiss who was born only 10 kilometers away from Gunzburg, where Dr. Joseph Mengele, the Swiss angel of death, was from. See my video on Mengele. In a town in southern Germany called Fleinhausen, Dinkelsham, within the province of Bavaria. So here you can see Dinkelsham and Fleinhausen. This is where he was born. I will tell you his name in a minute. And here, just 10 kilometers away, is Gunzburg. I showed in an, on another map in a minute. He lived and was born in the western part where they, of Bavaria, where they speak Alemannic, as in Switzerland, being the descendants of Swiss genocidal murderers who replaced the original German population after and during the Thirty Year War from 1618 to 1648. Right here you can see the traditional distribution area of Western uh, Upper Germany uh, Alemannic. So where it's green it's uh, where they speak Bavarian. This is, this is the province of Bavaria here but it's Alemannic and here's Gunzburg where Dr. Mengele the Nazi um, sadist uh, camp doctor was from and who was protected in Switzerland all the time after the war and just here about here is uh, a, a, t a small town called Fleinhausen which belongs to Dinkelsham and it's Alemannic they Mengele and the guy I'm gonna call I'm gonna tell you his name in a minute he's one of the most uh, notorious uh, Nazis of the Second World War, the most dangerous and the most influential. And well, he was an ethnic Swiss as well. And as I've shown you in some of my other videos, the Swiss, they have plans now in 2015 to create a big Swiss empire with all the Alemannic states, as in France, the Alsace and uh, Baden-Württemberg in Germany and... Um, Bavaria, of course, and for Alberg, it says for Alberg. The Austrians, they call the for Alberg, they call him the Xieberger. Because the Swiss, they use, they, they speak Swiss. And the Swiss, they, a German says, as I've been here and there, you know, uh, ich bin da gewesen. A Swiss, or somebody from for Alberg, he says, uh, ich bin dort gsi. Uh, I've been there. So they call him the Xi bag. Ich bin dort Xi. Xi. You know, they call him the Xi. In all of Austria, they're, they're not really, you know, like accepted as normal Austrians, really. They call him the Xi bag, you know, like some from, from out of Austria who are not Austrians. And, um, well, this was Himmler. His, um, his parents were born in. Like here, his mother in Vorarlberg in Bregenz and his father in Lindau. They, they, are, they are all ethnic Swiss, believe me. This is why Hitler never attacked Switzerland, you know. Uh, but he said once, I can take Switzerland with the, uh, with the Bregenz uh, fire department if I want, you know. And, uh, well, I mean, most of the Swiss, they, uh, they are like in, in a hilly country. And if the Swiss say, well, we're all in the mountains, you know, and, and nobody can defeat us, which is nonsense. It's, it's a very small percentage of the Swiss population who really live high up in a high altitude in the mountains. So you just take the low country, the low uh, mountainous area in like in Basel is flat, you know, and 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 in Bern and and you know the, the big cities Geneva, Zurich, and you you leave the hillbillies up there in the mountains, and they'll come down one, you know, when the, when they run out of food, you don't even have to battle them, you know. 
So Gunsburg, Mengele, Bregenz, uh, Himmler, and here is the other one. I'm going to tell you his name in a minute. So here I've got the map of southern Germany. And uh, well, here's Gunsburg. Yeah, there it is, Gunsburg. Yeah. And here's the other place, Dinkelsham. And here is Fleinhausen. It's not on the map here. So it's only 10 kilometers away, you know. Um, Mengele and the other uh, very influential Nazi, on which the Nazis based actually their, uh, their genocide and the concentration camps and everything. And here is Bregenz, you know, Himmler's mother, and here's Lindau, Him Him Himmler's father, and here's Switzerland, Zurich, the motherland. So, you know, it's very, it's very smart, you know, the, the Swiss Templars, you know, they, um, they created a zone, like, around Switzerland, um, in which the, um, the population is, uh, they are ethnic Swiss, you know, it's a protection zone. So nobody, you know, if you ever want to attack Switzerland, you have to go through this area here and um, bother with the, uh, with the authorities of another country, you know, in France, in Italy, in Austria and in Germany. It's very smart. Um, it's, it's like a protective uh, area, you know, a, um, a zone around all around Switzerland and nobody will attack the motherland. They thought of everything. And this military strategy, uh, like the, uh, the zone around Switzerland, in, um, it's called a buffer zone in English. So this is Wikipedia, you can read it if you want. A buffer zone. It's an old tactic, really. Uh, these are sly Swiss tactics. The buffer zone around Switzerland, in Baden-Württemberg, in Vorarlberg, in Austria, in Alsace, in France, and in uh, northern Italy. It's the Swiss buffer zone. So, here he is in uh, Nuremberg in 1945. Julius Streicher, like Julius Caesar, eh? another pharaoh. And here it says, Streicher was born in Fleinhausen, Kingdom of Bavaria. And uh, Kunigunde Roth, like in Rothschild. And here it says again, uh, he was born on February 12, 1885 in Fleinhausen, which is in the Swiss buffer zone of the Alemannic ethnic Swiss. So, there you go. 10 kilometers away from Mengele. The f practically neighbors. And it was indeed the Swiss Nazi Templars who mobilized the Germans into racism, genocide, and war. Therefore, the ethnic Swiss Julius Streicher founded the cartoonist newspaper Der Stürmer, or the Stormtrooper, to achieve the Swiss goal to exterminate the Jews, in which the genocide was claimed in every single edition since its foundation on April 20th, 1923. And in the same year, Hitler visited Zurich, Switzerland, the motherland, on August 30th, 1923, where he stayed for eight days, being financed by the Swiss and their Swiss general, Ulrich Wille Jr. So here you can see Julius Streicher next to Hitler. In the same year, 1923, this picture was taken in Nuremberg in 1923. In the same year as Hitler was in, in Zurich, in the motherland, and he's still wearing the same jacket of that period. Uh, well, what's he having in his pocket, eh? So, Julius Streicher. 
Well, let's have a look at it chronologically. From autumn 1922 onwards, the Nazi Rudolf Hess, who was born in Alexandria, Egypt, and just another pharaoh, studied in the motherland in Zurich, being friends with the Swiss pharaonic nobility of uh, Ulrich Wille, married into the von Bismarcks. So here you can see, it says in German, autumn 1922, Hess and other NSDAP um, um, persons, um, leading persons, they uh, visit a villa in Zurich. And here it says, um, villa, he gives Hitler 2,000 francs, that's in 2002. When uh, Villa, the Swiss Villa, he went to, uh, there was a Munich. I put in the links for you. You can, if you read German, you can read it yourself. Then Hess said on one of the Swiss cocktail parties, Hey, I know Julius Streicher, who can help Switzerland with the Jewish problem. Let's finance him. So they did, and a few months later, on April 20th, 1923, Der Stürmer was founded. And again, a few months later, on August 30th, also 1923, Hitler was invited to Zurich, which still is the financial capital of Europe today. So here you can see, it was founded on April 20th, 1923, by Julius Streicher, an ethnic Swiss, and uh, Mr. Hitler, he was in Zurich on August 30th, 1923. And they already had contact in 1922. So it's, it's in this time frame it all happened. And it's all connected to Switzerland. Der Stürmer, so the stormtrooper. Just watch how the financing of Hitler and Der Stürmer happened within the very same time frame of Swiss financing of the Nazis and, and the genocide. Here you can see, there was a, there's a document of the Bavarian, again Bavaria, the Bavarian um, foreign ministry. So Hitler got 30,000 Swiss francs, which is about 600,000 francs a day. And uh, he was in Zurich on uh, August 30th, 1923. And there's a historian, uh, Willy Gauci, he talks about this here. So it's all in the same time frame. You know, when the Surma got founded, Hitler was in, in Zurich and Rudolf Hess also, and where Swissies uh, dictated the 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 um, the idea of the genocide, really, actually. And both Adolf Hitler and Julius Streicher became millionaires through publishing Mein Kampf and Der Stürmer. And the funny thing is that, in fact, these guys were saying all the time, well, the Jews are rich, they're having all the money. But who were, in fact, the true millionaires, eh? Well, it was Swissy. It always is Swissy, the Nazi Templars of Octagon. Here you can read it. He was a multiple millionaire, and so was Hitler. You can look it up. They were the millionaires, and they had, and they still have, the Swissies, they still have all the money. Switzerland is the base for the financial elite, and it's not the other ones they're talking about. It's all a Swiss lie. In German, Ein Stürmer is a first row frontline assault soldier or a stormtrooper from the German word Stürmen, meaning to rush or assault. As in the German word for assault rifle or Sturmgewehr, nowadays only used in Swiss German and not so much in High German. And in fact, every Swiss man has a fully automatic 223 assault rifle with ammo in mags at home which is a Swiss mercenary tradition of the Swiss Nazi Templars. Der Stürmer can be compared with today's fascist cartoonist weekly of Charlie Hebdo, who are getting very rich too, with 200,000 subscribers now from, uh, from a previous 10,000 only. 
and making jokes of Islam and Muslims, just as Der Stürmer did with the Jews, telling the Germans millions of times until they believed it. Thus turning the cartoonist joke into Auschwitz. Yes, the German word for a joke is a Witz, as in Auschwitz, deriving as a logical reserve, result from Der Sturmer's jokes, just as Charlie Hebdo today and always with media's backup. A psychoanalysis of the human mind has shown that a human is much easier to indoctrinate by having his mind opened by a joke, a witz, or emotions like, oh poor Charlie, je suis Charlie, or poor Germans being the victims of financial jewellery. Oh yes, Swissy has studied mankind very well, and these creatures call this psyop the human nutcracker. And this painting here comes out of the mind of a Swissy. His name is Giga. So it leaves very little doubt in what they want to do with us, with mankind. I mean, a painting comes out of an idea. So they must have an idea what they're going to do. Right? And both Der Stürmer and Charlie Hebdo are pornographic in design, which is another tool to open up the human mind through yet another type of emotion. Altogether, too many similarities for not being a setup by the same rules, by the same set of people, in the same conspiracy against humanity. They say that Julius Streicher was hanged in Nuremberg in 1946, but more likely the paperclip Red Line under Swiss Eisenhower and Swiss Gay Edgar brought him into the USA to make cartoons of the communists this time and turning the US into a Nazi dictatorship just as Swissy did with Germany by using octagon on all the ex executives and other key positions.